Welcome everybody to my online step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial. My name is Erin, of course. Uh, welcome in. I'm here on Twitch right now for those who are watching on YouTube. Um, I record all of my step-by-step uh, -step tutorials while I'm teaching them live on twitch.tv slash paints. So if you want to check me out live while I'm teaching a tutorial or doing anything else painting related, uh, you can go there and see if I'm online. I'm online quite a lot, so check me out. Otherwise, welcome in everybody. Uh, in terms of how this is going to work today, you can see the painting to my right over here. It's a nice galactic camping type vibe. If you have any suggestions for a title for the painting, throw them in chat right now and then I'll look through them a little bit later because I like to choose one of your titles for the painting so feel free to suggest. Uh, and the idea is I'll teach it to you step by step. So I actually have a different screen here where I have the original painting but we won't need that so I'll take that off and I have a nice blank canvas so that I can paint along with you step by step. So you can still see the original. Um, you'll see the original being repainted here step by step and then you can also kind of listen and chat with me at the same time and that's why I'm still on screen so you can kind of put a face to the name as well. That's how it's gonna work. In terms of supplies that you need, um, I keep it the same every single time just to keep it nice and straightforward and simple. Um, I use five different paint colors so I have red, yellow, phthalo blue, black, and white. If you have more colors than that that's totally fine you're just kind of like ahead of the game uh, but otherwise I'll teach you how to mix all of the in-between colors, secondary colors, all of that uh, with those five different paint colors. In terms of brushes, I always use three different ones. And everyone's gonna laugh and say, no, you only use one, but I use three. My favorite is this one, it's the medium round brush, but I also sometimes use the large flat brush and the small round brush as well. So just anything with like different sizes, different shapes, that's what I recommend. Other materials I'd suggest having close by include a cup of paint water, um, a towel or paper towel, just anything to wipe your brushes on. Hopefully you're wearing an apron or something you don't mind getting paint on just because acrylic paint can be a little bit messy at times. Uh, and yeah, a canvas or a paper or anything else that you're arting on today. Uh, other places to find me if you're looking for me in other social medias, I'm pretty much Aaron Bun Paints on everything. Uh, if you're watching me on YouTube, you're already here, youtube.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. Uh, I'm on Instagram, instagram.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. That's where I post all of my uh, acrylic painting tutorial art. So you can see like still images of all my paintings as well as bullet journal uh, designs, personal art, things like that. Uh, Facebook is a good spot to check me out, facebook.com slash Aaron Bun Paints. That's where I post all of my step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorials as event pages so that you can kind of keep track of what's coming up. You can kind of RSVP and look forward to uh, future events. And otherwise, I'm on Twitter and I'm on Pinterest under the same exact name, Aaron Bun Paints. So check me out there if you like those medias as well. Social media sites, I don't know, those medias. Um, and I think that's all in terms of an introduction, so I'll just uh, do a quick little cheers with everybody here live on Twitch, and then we'll begin. Okay, let's uh, begin. We've switched already, that's great. Okay, so we're going to start as usual uh, kind of with the background. So the background in this painting is the nice sky. We're actually going to concentrate on the sky for quite a little bit at the start, um, just to really get the galaxy right. <clears throat> um, I've done a lot of different galaxies before, uh, and this one, again, I was kind of looking at specific photo references, trying to get it as close as possible, uh, kind of like as realistic as possible. Usually when I do galaxies, I'm not looking at a lot of photo references. I'm just kind of like blending colors around and just like making it all look nice and light and pretty amongst a dark background. Uh, but for this one, I was trying to make something more like kind of milk the Milky Way type vibe or just like a big string of galaxies going across. I hadn't really done anything like that before. That's a little more like a trail, you know, of light. So this was my attempt at that. So I go about it a kind of a different way than usual. Um, I'll just kind of explain first and then I'll show you via paint. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by doing the nice light middle here. And I'm not, I'm not looking at the purple, the dark purple. I'm just looking at the light strip here. Um, so I'm going to be laying down pink. Then I'll be laying down white on the outsides of the pink and then a light blue and then we'll blend it into the dark kind of purpley blue which you see everywhere else. So there's going to be a giant strip of all of those colors in the middle without this dark purple. What we do is we actually stack the dark purple on after. So we're going to have again a big light strip just of like all these nice blended colors and then we're going to dry brush the purple on top to kind of split it up a little bit so that's why it looks a little more separated here but you can still see the original kind of just uh, big brush strokes of these colors here. So hopefully it makes a little more sense as I show you, but that is the run down there. So while we're blending, we're going to go a little bit quicker just to make sure we can nicely blend all of those wet colors together. And then we can slow back down again as we're adding on the uh, dark bluish purple. 
So let's grab a big brush. That'll be a good one to start with. A nice big flat brush. Hmm. And I'm going to start in the middle. And you can change up the colors if you want. I chose to use the colors pink, white, and light blue, and then blend into, again, a purplish blue. But if you want to change any of those lighter colors in the middle, you totally can. I'm going to mix together uh, lots of white with just a tiny bit of red to make a very light pink with my large flat brush. And that'll be the first color you can see it goes kind of in the middle of all those colors. So again, trying to ignore the dark purplish blue that splits up all those colors. We're just kind of looking at the light colors as a whole, like a big strip of those colors right now. This is more of a medium pink, really. You can see I added a few dabs of red in there and it's getting a little bit brighter. You can see it's not the hottest pink, it's not the lightest pink. Somewhere in between. So I'm going to start maybe about a quarter to a third of the way down. And I'm going to kind of swing this up to um, the top right corner, maybe just a little before. So I'm not going all the way over, but almost. And I'm just starting by doing a nice pink strip right around that area. As you can see, I'm grabbing more paint. I'm using the wide edge of the brush and just starting to put that on in a nice big section. Yeah, I know, CJ, I'm uh, sorry, I'm catching up on comments. You guys have probably chatted since. Um, you said that would be such a good noise like to add to the stream deck. Yeah, I have a list of things like that that I want to add after my other stuff is done, after I have my other priorities dealt with. But yeah, I want to utilize more things like that. A little bonk sound effect would be hilarious. <laughs> Groan. <laughs> Bonk sound smash. I should smack my cup right now. I'm um, sorry, Sarah. This is a large flat brush. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Large number 12 flat. I'm pretty sure that's exactly the size I have right here. Yeah. You've got pretty much the same as mine. Is this a bright brush? Bright round. I get mixed up with bright and round, I think. I call this a round brush. I don't know if that's proper, but this is a size six for sure. Yes, the large flat. I think it's the flat 12. Where is supplies? Let's see. I think I wrote all the brushes down. I'm just going to check myself. Hey, Robin. <laughs> sound effect. You're right. Just a dial tone or the, the flat line. <laughs> yeah, large flat 12. I call it a medium round six, but I'm using the flat, uh, the flat 12 for now, Sarah. Yep. I get, I don't know what it is. It's bright and round that uh, messes me up. Yeah, and then maybe Peppa can like pop up or something with the sound effect. It would be so funny. Okay, I'm just reapplying a little bit just so it's really fresh and then we can blend it nicely. So I'm just grabbing more of the pink and just putting it on the edges just to freshen it up because we want to do wet on wet blending. So that means we have a wet paint color on top and then we add a new wet paint color and then move them together. Peppa. Bright versus round. Because I know there's a difference. Large belly and tapered end. I think I have a bright run and I put round. Oh no, I'm thinking of Filbert, of course. Flat. Oh no, okay, bright is like short and flat. Okay. So I do have a round. Thank goodness. I haven't been screwing that up this whole time. Cool. I didn't go to art school. I don't know. All right, so we're going to blend this out now. <laughs> Trust me, guys, I didn't go to art school. Uh, yeah, we have a nice wet, uh, light pink, and we're going to start to add some white around so you can see how it goes from pink to white. So I've grabbed white on my large flat brush. I've washed off my brush, of course. I don't want any extra pink on there for now. I'm just grabbing white. And I'm going to start applying that on the two edges of the pink. So I'm doing a nice sweep down like this. And then while my brush is still relatively clean, I'm just going to grab more white and sweep it on the bottom edge as well. So now I like, uh, I like applying the paint first. You can see I'm just applying it kind of right beside the pink. I haven't blended it quite yet. <sighs> white. <laughs> what are you talking about? And then I blend it in. So now what I'm doing is I'm brushing in between the pink and white and you can see it mixes the two together and softly starts to blend out that edge. So you can see a big difference hopefully between this edge and that edge. This one is just harsh. 
hasn't been blended yet. This one is nice and soft. It goes from pink to light pink to lighter pink to lighter pink and then to white. So I'm going to do now the same thing on the other side on the top. Just brushing in between using the full width of the brush so it's touching kind of both colors and moving them together. Titanium white. Oops, I just painted my microphone a bit. No! Hopefully that made for a nice ASMR sound. I'm going to mute this one sec. The bristles got like right in there. No, hold on. All of my equipment has paint on it. I should just give up at this point. I just don't want it to be like big blobs. When picking up the paints to start painting again, you can bet your buttons that I said titanium white to myself. <laughs> Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's too funny not to say, <laughs> and really yeah, really go f f white yeah, <laughs> blend that mic. It's not intentional. It was right on the edge of the canvas. It was like right here. It went <laughs> no. <clears throat> All right, we got to blend again. I'm actually going to again re-add a little bit of white just to make sure it's fresh. I'm in a warmer room, so my paints are drying a little bit quicker. <clears throat> Most acrylic paint dries within like 10 minutes. Mine's going more like five. So I'm just going to reapply a little bit of white. You can do the same if you'd like. It's not necessary. It's just only if you think your white is drying. We got Zone Thing Witty. Welcome in. Zomi Thing Witty. I'm not sure which one. Let us know how to pronounce the name in chat if you feel like it. Welcome in. Thanks for following starting a step-by-step -step acrylic painting tutorial right now. All right, I'm going to blend into a nice light blue next, that nice kind of light blue glow that you see. So I'm now taking my brush after I've washed it off, and I'm going to mix together a very light blue. This is where uh, my phthalo blue kind of comes into handy. You can see it produces a super, super bright blue, very electric blue. Depending on what blue you have, you might have kind of a different tone or a different look. And that's okay. Um, I just know in my paintings I really like bright colors, bright blues, so that's what I stuck with here. I'm going to do the same thing with that. I'm going to first apply it below the white in a nice big strip, and then above the white in a nice big strip, and then I will blend them together. So after I apply the paint, I'm actually going to wash my brush off or wipe it off a little bit, That just that way there's no more extra blue because it's a very pigmented strong color. And then I'll just use a clean brush to blend. I think I'll add maybe a little bit more. I like the light blue to really extend out. Like we have lots of room before we get to uh, kind of the purpley blue, so I really like to extend it a little bit further. We don't need to keep it straight either. You can kind of make it wider in certain areas or thinner in certain areas just to kind of mess up the edges of this galaxy area. I'm just going to widen here and there, and then I'll blend it all in a little bit messier. So again, once that's on, I'm just washing off my brush, wiping it off. It looks like toothpaste. It does! I just wanted to make it a little wavier with a little tip at the end. We're painting toothpaste tonight, and then we're just blending in. You can see my blue already is kind of taking over my white. It really started to blend in very quickly, so if you need to re-add white, you can. You can just grab a little white on your brush and add it in as you blend. But I don't really mind. I don't mind if all the white is a little bit eaten up by a nice light blue. It's still a nice pretty color. You can see as long as I get lots of nice very light pastel bright colors in there, it all turns out fine. It's all just nice and soft together. That's a key as well. Doesn't really matter how they blend as long as they're all blended some way. Maybe the blue kind of comes into the pink a little bit extra. That's fine. All these colors will blend nicely, so even if you reach all the way to the pink, you'll just uh, blend the two, two together, the blue and the pink. Hey, Lori! Oh, no worries, no worries! Just got home, it's the weekend now! No worries at all. Just on the galaxy, as you can see here. Kind of a different galaxy tonight, so this will be fun to watch. Aquafresh, yeah, 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 yeah. Definitely a specific brand. Hmm. <laughs> 
And I'll just leave you for a minute or two there. If you're blending, I'm going to keep adding a little bit of light blue a little further out just to get the glow going a little bit further. And then we'll do one more blend for the rest of the sky before we start to do some dry brushing. And you can never really go too far with the lighter colors because you can always cover it up with dark, right? If anything, when you blend the dark color into the blue, um, it's going to eat up the blue, just kind of like what happened with my white, right? It kind of ate up the white. So if you're nervous about how much, um, how much light blue to add, just add a little bit more than you think. It's always easier to add more. That's why you can see I'm just extending it maybe a little bit further, getting some fresh blue on there. And that way it'll blend a little bit easier. Oh, thanks, Lori. Yeah, I kind of uh, described at the start, it's pretty different than a lot of the other galaxies I've done. Like I always say, I always want to make sure I'm kind of teaching something a little different, even if it's the same subject matter, I can at least change it a little bit. So this is quite a different galaxy. Like I've never really done a process like this before. You can see I'm laying on all these very just strips of color and then I'm going to split them up later. I'm going to use the dark uh, bluish purple. The painting with bathroom supplies dream, wait, what? <laughs> we should have painted this with the bathroom supplies. Watch as I literally paint toothpaste. No. I think that's what people thought the bathroom supplies dream would be, is that I'm actually painting using them as well, like using toothpaste. <laughs> no, 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 no. That's a trend that's gonna die off in a month. I can't, I can't name it that. I didn't think of it. Mmm, aqua fresh. Why is everyone thirsting over toothpaste right now? Mmm. <laughs> I designed it a while back. Yes, Lori. It was actually for a private event, and I have the permission from the person who hired me for the for the painting. Uh, it's actually gray. Uh, yeah, I have permission from Gray to reteach it to everybody. So yeah, it was just nice to have it kind of uh, in my collection. I didn't have to design anything for this week. I was uh, busy doing other things, so I I brought it out. Yeah. And it's just a nice summery painting. Everyone's going camping and stuff, so I thought it was appropriate. Yes, but I believe I painted it on Twitch. Like, I designed it on Twitch, so that's probably why you recognize it. Even though I taught it offline, I think I designed it online. A toothpaste galaxy. All right, I'm going to start blending now uh, our last color of the sky, and then we're going to start to um, fix up the galaxy a little bit or change it up anyway. Um, so now what we want to do is we want to add the very dark color. This is what's going to kind of close in everything and really encapsulate this area for the nice light bright galaxies. Uh, I'm going to use a nice bluish purple for that. So it isn't actually just straight blue. It's a little bit of a bluish purple. Um, so I'm going to go to my plate here and I'm using the same brush. I'm going to mix together lots of blue with some red. And I would say I'm using more blue than red because again, I keep calling it like a bluish purple. So lots of blue, a little bit of red. I just want to change the, the color of the blue a little bit with some red. It's going to be very dark. You can see how dark it is compared to everything else. So don't be alarmed. That's how it should be. And you don't need to cover the whole thing because you can see we'll be adding some trees, but you do want to be safe because we have some gaps in the trees. So to be safe, I would say bring it down to about three quarters of the way down. Then you can maybe just kind of arch it up like this. That way your trees will go up and down like this and you'll probably only see the gaps till about there and there. So about three quarters of the way down, you can even do this little curve if you want. That's where we're adding the color and we will be blending it. So if you want to get your blending with over first, you can of course put this color next to the light blue and then blend that in either as you're adding or one step at a time. You can add your paint first like I usually do and then use a clean brush to blend if you want. And again, you can go as far in as you like. I put lots of light blue on here so that I have lots of blending room. I can really create a nice big glow area. Phil of the future was always pushing aquifer. I don't remember this. I was thirsting for it as a young impressionable. That shouldn't be legal. Influencing the children for what toothpaste to buy like that. You didn't know. Interest trend to freeze dabs of toothpaste to make after dinner mints. No, I don't. <laughs> Was that a thing? Did you try it, Elvin? Or you're just like, no, I don't think so. Freezing dabs of toothpaste to serve to your guests. I don't think that'd go over too well. <laughs> yeah, it's just toothpaste. Don't worry about it. Stick in your mouth. See how it goes. 
You're not supposed to eat toothpaste. Are they recommending you digest that? That's a lot of a lot of questions I have. All right, so this galaxy is getting a lot bigger than my other one. My other one's a lot more contained. I'm going to see if I can bring this dark color in a little bit more. But just know in my second one here I'm doing, it might be a bigger, wider galaxy. I don't have a problem with it. I like a nice big galaxy. I'm just uh, pointing it out in case anyone wants it closer to the original. You'll want to bring your purplish, uh, bluish purple up a little bit further. You can see mine's very light and blendy. But I like it. Again, I like a nice slow transition, so lots of light before the dark. Just keep adding. If you want to darken it, I'm just continuing to add. Till the future removed from my mind till now. I honestly never watched it. I recognize the title. I'm alarmed. <laughs> Don't be alarmed, though. I just told you not to be alarmed. I'm alarmed. <laughs> Mom, I'm alarmed. I did not. It was like those five uh, minute craft. Oh, OK, yeah. So you just knew. I'm glad. I'm glad you called that out without even needing to try it, Elvin. Yeah, those five minute craft videos are quite concerning. I know that's kind of the meme at this point, but like sometimes you look at comments under those videos and really wonder if people know that they shouldn't be doing those five minute crafts. So smart. I'm going to do this when I get home. No, 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 no. Please don't. All right, so you can start, you're starting to see how dark it is. Especially when you're not blending, you can see it's a super, super dark color just all on its own. So you're just still sticking this on here. I should have gone up here and blended, but that's okay. If you ever run into an issue where something isn't blending, it's usually because one of the colors is dry. So I'll probably run on into that issue up here because I've left it alone for too long. If you run into that issue, it's no worries. You can just apply this new color and then you'll go in with the light blue on your brush to help blend. It's like you're reapplying the fresh color. You're not supposed to eat toothpaste. That's what I heard, dude. I used to eat toothpaste when I was younger, along with the, with the drink fluoride. Oh no. I know. <laughs> we don't listen to uh, copyright free music. This is banger. <laughs> These are the only good copyright free songs. <laughs> They're all okay, but these ones are actually. I enjoy them. Dr. Tech MD, I think. Hmm. It's very nice and galactic for this painting, honestly. Spacey. Oh, all right, then I'm gonna stick this up here. Unsupervised paint, always causing problems. Yeah, that's what happens. Leave it alone for two seconds, it causes issues. I'm just going to apply all of it that I can, and then we'll blend. So yeah, same idea. I'm adding one color, then I'll add a second color. It's just reverse order. Because this one is dry. So now what I do, instead of picking up that dark color, I'm picking up the lighter color, which is the light blue. Just mixing a little more on my brush. Just get it as close as possible. You don't need it to be an exact match because it's just going to blend anyway, right? So even though it's a little lighter, I'm just going to blend it in and it'll all become pretty seamless. Watch out, microphone. Don't want to do the same thing as I did before. There we go. And now it's all blending in. And now that you've added that fresh light blue, you can always go back to the darker color if you want to keep blending that way. Just keep adding and moving into the freshly applied light blue. But of course, be careful, the further you go in, the drier it's going to be. So I might have to go back in with more light blue. I'm just going back and forth at this point. I'm not being very efficient, but that's fine. At least you can see what happens. Ooh. He do be an unsupervised paint, though. Okay. Back in with my light blue again. You can see I didn't add enough, so it got a little sticky. Now I'm just re-adding it and blending it out. There we go. See you later. All right. 
So yeah, it actually does look pretty big, but when you really look at the lightest parts, it is very much closed in, so it might actually be pretty close to my original. I still think it could be a little higher up, but that's okay. A nice band of color that we're going to split up um, in a bit here. I'm just going to give a couple extra minutes at this point because this is a good, uh, good spot to pause. Uh, we've done all our blending. We don't need to rush anymore. We actually want things to dry a little bit so we can start to dry brush and split it up. That'll be the next step is using the dark kind of purplish blue and sticking it on top of our color, which is kind of scary at the start as it always is. Uh, but the more you add, the better it goes. We're going to start very thick in the middle as if there's no light even there. You can see in the original there. And then we kind of dry brush it out so it starts to kind of fade a little bit. It doesn't look like just a big dark patch in the middle. My battery died. It's exhausted. Easy fixes. You can fix, you can fix. Exactly. And if you don't like something, you can cover it up. Already battery. 8.30. It's been an hour. I'm telling you, they're losing their juice after so long of doing this. I've abused them for too long. There we go. And the light's all off again. A little darker. A little darker. Maybe one more. Better. Okay. Stay there. Yelling break. <laughs> Where is this guy from? Shoop de whoop. He's global. Dang it. <laughs> Yelling break. <laughs> Everyone yell. Hey, Pink Whitney. I forgot you're on it. No worries. No worries. I've been trying to do consistent Fridays. I think recently, though, I've been a little bit on and off, so no worries at all. I'm here tonight, though. Welcome in. We just uh, finished off a little bit of blending for our galaxy. Uh, we'll be kind of splitting it up next with the uh, nice dark purplish blue. But yeah, still lots to go, so no worries. Welcome in. I don't know, Grok. A question never really has an answer. Time is short. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> We have limited time on this earth. We must yell. You guys are going off something tonight. I don't know what's up. <laughs> How does he sound when he yells, Gray? Hey, next Friday? No, I have my um, school group next Friday. Yeah, the school group that I usually paint with about once, uh, once a month. Usually it's the last Friday of the month, but they wanted mid-month this time, so... I'll be occupied with that. Mm -hmm. Keep your eye on Facebook. I'll be sure to post uh, when the next one is. Maybe I'll design one for next week to post uh, weeks from then. We shall see. I had an idea for one and I almost painted it this week, but then I... Uh, what did I do instead? I did something else on Tuesday. Was it a 10 by 10? Either way. I'll, uh, yeah, I'll think about doing one next week, if I can fit it in. I want to get some more 10 by 10s done. What did I do on Tuesday? Oh, I, okay. No, no, no. Yeah, it wasn't a 10 by 10. It was a custom. I remember now. Three days, man. A stormy sea scene. Ooh, like with a sailboat that's like rocking back and forth type thing. That's interesting, Kate. Because usually, of course, I stick with like bright happy sunshine but a nice storm yeah that would be cool if you um hmm, if you have any inspo or any like photos that you've seen that you like they could be used for that feel free to post them in discord i'd love to see what you're thinking i like that in general though <laughs> seabirds and stuff just black and white noir that would be cool though honestly Thinking of all those things kind of uh, smushed together. I will consider it. Yeah, I never get too dark. Yeah, I have that on my list, Charlene. Ooh, a full black and white. I don't know if I've done it. We did the poppies. That's as close as we got. And then I said, I can't do it. And I added some red. It is time, isn't it? Just black and white. Only two colors needed, black and white, and we can do a whole painting with it. That'd be neat. I know I like black and white paintings a lot. Color's nice, but black and white paintings you can put anywhere, any room. Yeah, moody. 
Sad, stormy, dark. Mm-hmm. Stormy sea. I like that, Kate. Again, thinking of a sailboat kind of lost at sea type thing. I like all of that. Yay! Yeah, I'll see if I can fit it in next week. I don't know my schedule's like next week yet. <laughs> Thick static. <laughs> what is going on tonight? <laughs> Aesthetic. Did I do that right? Yes. Am I mispronouncing it? <laughs> is it aesthetic? I say aesthetic. <laughs> I swear, I question everything I pronounce ever since streaming. It's all a toothpaste we've eaten. That wouldn't describe all the behavior going on right now. Aesthetic. Aesthetic. Roast me, tell me if it's wrong. I'll just go back to teaching because that's what I know how to do. I don't know how to do English words. Um, I know how to teach painting, so I'll do that. Uh, next, what we're doing, <laughs> if your pink and white and blue is dry like mine is, we can start to dry brush on top. It's pretty much dry. There might be a little bit of like a, a wet edge kind of on the very edge here with the purpley blue, but that's okay because we're working mostly in the middle. <laughs> oh, you can't pin me on that. So yes. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right, I've got my brush. I'm going to start to apply some <laughs> bluish purple. Bluish purple, lots of blue, a little bit of red. Same color as we made for the dark background here. Still? <laughs> Still, is that you? You guys! I wet my brush before I brush. Thanks, pizza! Welcome in! <laughs> Everyone's talking about toothpaste. Feel free to join the convo. Hey, you guys! Alright, so I've got that color and I've uh, switched brushes if I didn't say it already, sorry. I'm using the medium round brush now, my favorite brush of all of my three brushes that I use. Uh, and what I'm doing, you can see I'm loading up with paint at the start. Um, I don't have um, a cleaner brush like I would with dry brushing, but what I like to do is I like to put the paint on first, kind of thicker, because as you see in the middle of the painting, um, or I guess the middle of the galaxy rather, it's very dark, aside from the stars, if you can look past the stars. It's very dark in the middles, and it only kind of starts to fade on the outsides. It's when we kind of get to the blue edge and start to fade out these darker uh, parts with no light in them is where we, uh, again, get the dry brushing going. So we can lay down a thicker amount of paint in the middle, and then we can dry brush outwards. Hope that makes sense. My goodness, my words. So let's start to lay down some paint. You can see very thick. We're not too worried about how it's looking, of course, right now, because it's going to look kind of weird. Very blobby right now. There's a little, like, worm in the middle of our galaxy. What's going on? And I'm just kind of, like, going right in the core, right in the middle, maybe bringing it up and out a little bit, kind of reaching out to, um, yeah, the darker areas up there. Maybe it comes over and out this way a little bit. Just trying to really keep it uh, random. I'm not thinking exactly where it's going, just kind of moving it out, allowing the darkness to kind of connect again. I found that was a key. I didn't like having just like patches of floating darkness. I wanted it all to kind of connect so it was more like the, um, the light areas were all disconnected. That's more the goal. It's kind of weird. You can think about it in either way. You can kind of look at where you're adding the dark or look at what it's doing to the light. Both ways are fine. But yeah, let's add a little bit and then I'll show you what it looks like when I blend out because I know right now it looks kind of funky. I'll catch up in chat in a second. All right, so once I have some paint down, then you can start to dry brush it. So dry brushing, if we haven't done that before, if, I, if you haven't done that before with me, I've done it lots, but not sure if you have. Um, I'm using a clean brush, actually. Sometimes I have a little bit of paint on it, but instead what I'm doing is I'm going to move the paint around that's on the canvas uh, and just use a clean brush. And the idea is I want to try and use it uh, just very softly. So I'm just kind of like taking my bristles and lightly rubbing on the very edge. So you can see it's kind of grabbing and moving it around. I'm swirling my brush as well. I'm kind of going round and round and round with it. That's the way I like to use it, just moving it around like this. You can see what it does is it picks up little bits of paint, 
and starts to move it, yeah, a little further away from the darker areas. So you start to maybe see some of the light coming through, but not fully. And I just want it to kind of fade away. So you can see what I'm constantly doing is wiping off my brush because it's constantly picking up paint, right? So you want to keep wiping it off, keeping it clean until you have a nice soft edge like that. And it just kind of swirls out. It's kind of like a very cloudy area. It all kind of clouds together. So here I am, I'm going around this edge now, just grabbing small amounts of paint that's left on the canvas and trying to swirl it around, scrape it around. And I'm constantly wiping off my brush because again, it's a very dark color that it's picking up and I only want tiny bits on my brush so it very softly gets off of the brush. And I'm just working my way all the way around. And again, it'll look very funky and very weird at the start. You're going to be like, I'm not doing this right. It doesn't look right. But you have to continue. You have to go all the way to the end. You don't have to. I'm not your mom. But like, you should. If you're doubting yourself, I'm saying you should go all the way to the end. Because that's when it's really all going to pull together. And you'll start to see all the light areas separating rather than looking at the dark areas. Your, your brain will kind of do a switch, I find, at some point. It'll start to look at the light areas only rather than the dark areas as one, you know? Hopefully that makes sense. I'm just going to catch up on chat here. Oh, you're fine. Oh, pizza got the second dose. It's kind of kicking my butt. Can relate. Yeah, no worries. Sleep is good. Sleep cures all with this, uh, this second vaccine. Yes. Yeah, just roll with the fever dreams. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm not your mom. <laughs> yep, I'm not the boss of anybody. You guys can do what you want. I always start by saying that. I don't know if I did that this time. You don't have to paint when I'm painting. Usually that's what I say in my intro. I didn't this time, but I still mean it. If you don't feel like painting this, you can paint something else. If you feel like doing this but not painting, that's fine. You can draw it. You can digital art it. You can sculpt it. I don't know how you'd sculpt this, but that's cool. You can do whatever you want. So I'm not your mom. And you can do whatever you like. You could give up. That's not my choice. You could do this and say, I don't like it and I'm not going to do it. I'm just recommending that you give it a little more of a try than that. All right, now I want to get all the way to the edge there. There we go. And I just keep darkening up the middle too. I find as I do the dry brushing, my brush kind of moves the paint around so much so that even the middle starts to kind of cloud out a bit, but I want it to be super dark in the middle. So as I get further and further out, as I kind of keep blending it, swirling and blending and dry brushing, I like to kind of go in and add thicker paint right to the middle. See the difference that made? I don't know if you can tell, but just adding more, how dark it is in the middle now. You can just keep stacking it on top. I find that's key to really darken up the middle and then soften up the edges. It'll it'll make your edges appear softer too, right? The darker the middle is, the more your edges will appear softer because there's more of a transition. All right, I'm going to zoom out on the original just so you can continue to see the whole thing. If anyone needs me to zoom in, I can, but I'm just going to keep adding. This is going to take a little bit of time just because it takes, again, a lot of dry brushing. Dry brushing in general takes time, right? So no rush at all. I'll go nice and slow with you all. I think I'll actually go all the way to the end with this. I really like to, you can see, kind of like split it in two. So I'm just going to, I know I'm confident I want all in there. So I'm just going to add a nice thick area of this dark purple all in there. And I'll figure out where it's going after. And yeah, you don't always have to make it meet an edge. You could like add a little bit of darkness and it just stops. I'm just recommending here and there. It'll help kind of split up all the areas, right? Even if you want to bring it in from the edge, that would work as well. Again, if you have a nice wide edge like me, lots of light areas, you can kind of dot on some of this color from the edge and bring it in to help split up even more. And some people like to tap too. You might see I'm kind of tapping my brush. I do a little bit of tapping and swirling but tapping will give a nice texture as well. So lots of tapping is fine too. 
I just think you won't get as soft of an edge if you only tap. I think the dry brushing is better for that. So kind of like, again, rubbing and swirling your brush. Yeah, and then maybe you have some lighter edges and that's okay too. <clears throat> Great, actual painting question. The purple in the middle is the same purple as the purple on the outside of the galaxy. I believe so. You know, Gray, it's, uh, I'm always doubting myself because I wanted it to be taught the exact same way I taught you, for example, but yes, I believe it is. Same as this, like it should be eventually like blending in and disappearing into this color, yes. Hope that's the same as when I made it, I believe it is. Love it when Erin tells Rowdy Chat she's not her mom. I'm not responsible for you all is really all I'm saying. You, I, I'm kind of packaging it as an empowering thing. Like you guys can do what you want, but really I'm just saying I'm not responsible. Pink Whitney just got my second one uh, last night. High temp, but feel better. Oh, I'm glad, I'm glad. Okay. I, uh, I don't know, I guess I got the worst of the symptoms because I've talked to more people since and more people are telling me that they had nothing. My mom, for example, was like, nope, didn't feel a thing. My arm was kind of tender. Does that count? And I was like, I guess, like that is a side effect, but nothing else, huh? She's like, nope. <laughs> what a beast. What happened there? Someone's a bun now. Oh, Robin, continuing the gift set from Arcane. Thank you. I don't know why that didn't pop up in my activity feed, but I see it in the chat, so thank you. The gift sub turns to a real sub. Well, not that gift subs aren't real. I don't know why I said that. It's not like it was a fake sub. It's just a gifted sub. Congrats, Robin, and thank you. That's what I should say. <laughs> you have a real sub now. <laughs> Arcane sub was real too. <laughs> Thanks, Robin. I appreciate it. Mm-hmm. Almost as good as don't embarrass me. <laughs> Love that to Greg, <laughs> Whitney. <laughs> no, I don't. That's not what I said. I do prefer Prime over all, though. I'll tell you that because it's free to everybody. <clears throat> I will, uh, I, I don't mind admitting that. Takes it from Jeff to everybody else. Feels good, man. Jules had to step away for a minute. How long do I wait to blend that in? Um, as long as everything's dry. So the second all that's dry, you're just kind of adding the uh, purple. I'm kind of blotching it on and then blending it out. So uh, being a little heavier to begin with, you can kind of tap it on so where it's nice and dark. And then you're using a cleaner brush to kind of blend it out. And I'm recommending that you, uh, you know, bring some, you know, out to the outsides again. So it looks like a lot of it's all connected. And you can see I'm dry brushing by just grabbing the paint that's on the canvas and then just kind of moving it around. So right now it's still kind of looking like it's almost like your eye is kind of looking at the darkness rather than the light. But as we move further, as we add all of this darkness in here, I think your eye is going to start to look at the light stuff instead of the dark stuff. It's going to make it look like the light is on top, if that makes sense. It's not like the dark is covering up the light. It's more like the light is covering up the dark. So that's coming. My eyes haven't done the switch yet. It's still very much looking at the dark parts. That's not true. I've been responding to everybody and I've received no donations. Watch Black Widow. It was pretty good. I don't have a big interest in watching it, but I'm glad it was good. Did it come out just today? I know they've been advertising it a lot. It would make sense if it was just today. I think it's been really ramping up recently in terms of a promo. So yeah, and again, this is so different because usually I'm working with the light colors doing this, right? I'm using the light colors to kind of blend. And sometimes, and I will go in a little bit maybe and blend a little bit with lighter colors just to soften even more. It's not a mandatory step, but I believe it's when I did when I made this painting because I wanted to soften up even more and maybe bring back some colors. I know last time when I made this, um, my pink, for example, got very covered up, so I added in some pink. 
in spots where it wasn't originally. So you can do the same if you kind of cover up a color and you're like, oh no, it's gone. You can always re-add it by dry brushing it in. Oh yeah, and the stars, yeah, gray is so right. The stars make a huge difference too. Yeah, even if you complete the galaxy part and you're still like, it looks kind of funny, throw stars on it. I know it's kind of like you really got to trust to do all of those steps, but just do it. <laughs> and then if you still don't like it, try again. But Gray's right. The stars just add an extra layer kind of on top of everything. Yeah, really does bring it all together as well. So yeah, I'm just acknowledging it's a very funky galaxy, very different for me. I haven't really seen it taught this way either. And this was, uh, I remember when I was creating this online, I was kind of uh, frustrated with it. I think I did a couple versions. From what I remember, I like covered up a couple times. It was on the same canvas, but I think I remember kind of flipping it around and doing it again and doing it again. Because I was like, I don't like how this is turning out. I don't like it, I don't like it. But after I did this method, I ended up liking it. So we figured it out eventually. <clears throat> Disney Plus, not sure when it started. Oh, okay. Is that how they're doing it now? They're going straight to Disney Plus, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. I just don't even see the messages either, so you can say whatever you want about me, about stream. I didn't see that message either, so... <laughs> I won't repeat that, though. Absolutely not. That's a, it's a big secret. It's locked up. <laughs> Great. Now I feel weird. Now I don't want to repeat anything. All this chat is kept secret from those re-watching this video. Because it was promised. <laughs> Cray, I wouldn't feel bad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I didn't see anything. Everyone scours. Quick, scram! Alright, I'm probably gonna do this uh, blending for another 5 to 10 minutes just as a heads up for timing. And then I might do again a tiny bit more blending with my lighter colors. Maybe I'll just show you that and uh, that way if you're Again, if you've covered up a color or just want to add more colors and kind of soften things up even more, you can. I don't know if I really want to or need it with mine, but I'm sure it wouldn't hurt. Okay, I'm gonna soften up these. Great, yes. <laughs> oh yes. Yeah, great. They uh they need a little a little talking to then. Absolutely. Oh, okay, thanks for the lurk. Welcome in. Hope you have a good Friday Eve. I know, I know. The geef ones are super inspiring. Geef yeah, geef channel geef, I don't know, has nailed it. <laughs> Geef or whoever makes Geefs of votes, they're all so great. Melissa, hey, do you recommend any particular brand of paint? I do. Not sponsored either, it's just my honest opinion. Uh, this is the Start Academic Acrylic Paint. I buy it from Curry's in Ontario. I believe Curry's is Canada-wide. Um, but yeah, Start Academic Acrylic, and I'm not sure where it is in the States, unfortunately. But I'm sure it could be found online. Um, I've heard a good equivalent to this in the States is um, 
Lick sells their own acrylic paint kind of in huge two liter jugs like this. That's why I buy it in two liters because I do paint a lot, but it's also a great value that way. It's about $20 Canadian for this after tax, so hard to beat. And yeah, it's a, it's not like the best, highest quality paint, Melissa. It's just like, yeah, it's value. I think it does its job. You can see it can be, you know, nice and opaque when it needs to be. There's a little bit of transparency issues, but I feel like all paint has a little bit of transparency issues from color to color. So yeah, I've learned to use this and I do enjoy it. So, and again, easy on the wallet. Yeah, whoa, that one is. <laughs> Yeah, the Geef juice is a lot. Um, I like the sunglasses, though. If you have any more gray, throw them in. I like uh, <laughs> looking at them for inspo. I have quite a few good ones. Yeah, that juice is really, really aggressive. All right, this is a bigger galaxy. I can already see. Look how large it's like spawning. Before it was, yeah, stopping like here. So this is just a very, very wide kind of trail of galaxies. Again, I don't mind it, just pointing it out in terms of differences with the first. It's very spidery. I might close up some of those spidery areas. I don't like how it's splitting too, too much here. So let's add more here. And again, you're welcome to uh, re-add color if you need to. So if you want to re-add pink, for example, just because I'm saying pink is probably most likely because it was right in the middle. So it may have been eaten up from uh, all of your purple. Uh, where's my white? I need some more white there. Um, as long as your purple is dry, that's the one key. You might not want to do this uh, close to a freshly applied purple, but you just take little bits of color and start to kind of swirl around. That'll soften even more, and you can see it just adds more of the color. If you kind of lost the color and just want a little bit more kind of hanging out in there, you can swirl it into the purple, into other colors. You can see this swirls a little bit into the blue. That's fine. Yeah, you can see it added a little more of a glow. So I'm going to maybe do that just a little bit as we wait for everybody here, just to make sure we're giving lots of time. I'm just kind of playing around at this point. This isn't a necessary step. It's just one you can do if you want. So yeah, you can see I'm kind of sticking some pink in some little pockets, rubbing into the purple. It helps kind of blend it a little bit more, soften it up. Yeah, it just adds different pockets of color wherever you want. Maybe it turns into more of a light purple. That's fine as well. I keep changing that quite a bit. Yeah, I feel like that's uh, that's why I haven't seen some of those gifts. I feel like you've thrown a lot of them before, but you're right. It's just a whole collection of them. I don't know when I'd ever use that one. Yeah, like a hydrate type thing. Maybe if everyone's being thirsty, you can use that one. Drink up. Yeah, he's really thirsty. Exactly. Open wide, made you some content. Do, 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 do. Do, 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 do. What color is the dark blue? Uh, it's like a bluish purple Vonda, so it's lots of blue with a little bit of red. This color I'm adding, that was just pink, Charlene. So I was saying this wasn't a mandatory step. It was just if you wanted to re-add some color into the galaxy, you can grab some pink or maybe it's white or maybe it's blue and just kind of softly put it wherever you want. I was suggesting pink because it's right in the middle, so it's probably the most likely to have been eaten up by the dark purple as you were adding it. But you can do this with any color, even a new color. If you want to start to splice in like small little areas of different colors, you totally can. I'm just going to show you with blue just as yet another example. So just kind of lightly dry brushing it wherever you want. Again, it helps soften up any areas. So if you have any harsher areas with the purple, you can just kind of, you can see softly move it into the purple. See how that just, uh, yeah, makes it even smoother than it was before. You can cover things up if you need to, if anything's a little too harsh for your liking. Makes it just a little bit cloudier, a little bit, uh, a little bit more transparent here and there. But again, not super necessary, just something you can do if you want. Oh, 
So yeah, when I was making this painting again, I do remember I closed in the middle a little too much. And that's why you see my pink kind of goes around. It's not like a straight line anymore. It kind of comes up and around in some points. It's because I had to re-add it in. So it helps with that too. It helps kind of get rid of the stripiness. Everything's kind of in line. If you start to move your pink around a little bit more, you'll kind of break the idea of all of it being in line one at a time. Yo, Joe, nice to see you. It's been a minute since I popped by your stream. How have you been? Home, those colors. I assume I'm a homie and not a home. I'll, I'll be a home though too, that's okay. Home, these colors. Homes? Anywho, welcome in. Yeah, homie, it's all right, it's all right. Home, I just love how loud it was. Just like, home! <laughs> Thanks for shouting out, Joe. That was coming next. Thank you very much. <laughs> home, these colors. <laughs> Glad you like. These are my basic colors. I feel very basic with these colors at this point because I do use these quite a lot. That was something I noticed, everybody. I was telling you I painted the edges of all my paintings recently. In the last two days, I painted like 40, 40 paintings worth of edges because even though I tell everybody to paint their edges, I fail to do the same. I don't take my own advice. And my God, I'll never make that mistake again. If I'm making an original painting or a tutorial painting or whatever, you best believe I'll do the paint or the uh, edges live on stream because I do not want to have to do that again. It took two solid days of just sitting in front of the TV mindlessly and just like trying to match colors. That was the other tough thing, matching the colors after the fact. Anyway, what I'm trying to say with all of that is I had a look at all of the edges of the paintings all lined up. A lot of them are blue. A lot of them are purple. A lot of them are pink. All those same. Yeah, it's all this pop palette and there's a reason for it. It looks great, but I do, uh, I do recognize maybe I should expand a bit from it. Either way though, who cares? If it looks good, it looks good. Anyways, that was a rant. Hello. But they are fabulous color combo, thank you. It's really hard to beat. It's all the bright, beautiful, it's all very like retro as well. It really matches the music, honestly. This album cover even has these exact colors on it. Just like dark purple, light blue, light pink, the vibrancy. So it's hard to go wrong. Okay, I think I'll leave another minute or two. Time is ticking by here and we haven't even went down the painting yet. I want to do the stars next. We got to get the stars on before we do the bottom. And that's what's going to really amp up the painting as Gray promised and as I promise you as well. The stars will bring it all together. If you're still nervous about how this is looking, I understand. Throw stars on there, see how it looks. Earth tones. You know what, Marion? I did, um... I think I showed you guys too, like a very, um, it was more muted colors, like mossy green colors. It wasn't, wasn't necessarily bright greens and bright yellows. It was all very muted stuff, but the same group that I did this painting for, um, it was like a, a foresty scene with a nice little like dirt trail. I loved doing that. Um, and I want to do more of that. And that was very, again, yeah, muted colors. I keep calling them muted, uh, moss, olive greens, things like that. I want to do that again. Um, so yeah, maybe we'll see more of it. Yeah, I know. <laughs> see, I say this and then <laughs> tomorrow I'll be like, bright again! Yeah, it's something I need to force myself to do. I keep talking about it, but um, I want to start getting into like doing series... A series of paintings here and there, like keeping a theme and then doing a couple of them and having them all as a nice big group. I think that would be nice looking and that would be one of the ones I'd want to do like a nice greenery one. Butterfly was green background too. Butterfly. Which butterfly? I've done... Well, that, yeah, are you talking about the two monarchs? Yeah, yeah, Poppy was as close as I got to grayscale. I know, Joe, that's the thing. I'm kind of worried that'll happen too. People are like, but I like the bright stuff. Cause I know people like this and it's like, do they like the other one though? I don't know. Yeah, rock, yeah, I can still stay in landscape, Marion, yeah. Yeah, like a cloud series, yeah. <laughs> yes, <laughs> I swear, Grok, I'm still dreaming. I like, I thought about it today. <laughs> I think about that every day of all the colors and all the different scenarios I don't do with clouds. Uh. And I, I kind of decide, I don't know if I want to, I keep saying that I want to do oil paints for that one and like experiment with oils. I might just do acrylics for it. I'm kind of in a, in a space right now where I'm like, I keep talking about doing other mediums and I'm like, why? 
I like acrylics. Why? Why do I need to force myself to do other ones? So anyway, we'll see what I do. Galaxy. Yes, the monarchs. Yeah, they were like, there was lots of colors. There was like berry tones. It was like green berries, like teals as well, but not like our sea foamy, like bright teals. Yeah, and people really like that gray, even though I was kind of like, eh, people really liked it. So I should just do more. Oh, post some Grok if you want. Maybe I could use one if you want, if you want. Yeah, maybe I'll take some photos too. I think I'll get some inspo soon. Uh, we're at 9.08. Okay, yeah, so let's add some stars, everybody. So I'm gonna move this painting so I don't get stars all over because that's something I've been doing, apparently. Um, we're gonna add some stars. Let's uh, make this more of gal a galaxy, galactic galaxy. Uh, so what I'm doing now is I'm using my medium round brush, of course, and I'm dipping it into the water and I'm adding the water to my plate. Oops. So kind of dipping and then kind of swirling into the white. And my water is very blue right now. It's very murky because I've been washing off my brush a lot. So it's turning the white like a little bit. You can see like a light blue, but I don't mind that. If you really want a nice, bright, pure white, you can change your water, of course. Maybe change it real quick now. But do the same thing. Just dip your brush into the water, kind of like pool it into a little pile of white. I'm just kind of using the side of the white uh, pile here and you can see it's very liquidy now. That's what I want, liquidy white. Once you have the liquidy white, you can load it onto your brush. It's all nice and loaded in there. And the way I like to flick is just by using my index finger. I pull back and then let her fly. So I pull back like this. I'll go nice and tight to the painting and then flick. And that's how I do it. I'm just going to do that a bunch all around. There's lots of different ways to flick paint. Some people use a toothbrush. Wow, I've been talking about toothbrushes. Look at that. Um, some people kind of slam it against their hand. I think that's messier because you're going back and forward. So you might actually flick yourself a little bit. Um, I think this is the most controlled. And you can see I'm just kind of like watching the edges. I have a computer screen right here, so that's why I'm doing that. So yeah, just watch yourself as you do this. <laughs> watch the things around you. Make sure you're not flying everywhere. Acrylic paint does come off of things relatively easy, like um, like hard surfaces and stuff. You can kind of just pick it off or add a little water and dilute it, but it's just easier to be safe, right? You don't have to do all the cleanup later. Think about inspo for next painting session. I was thinking about rocks and water. Ooh. Yeah, with um, with it being summer, northern Ontario and just cottage country, I've been thinking about that. Um, remember I did rocks like a year ago? <laughs> Why do I say this? I remember like a whole entire year ago. I did a lighthouse painting and it never really made it into a tutorial painting, but I did those rocks and I actually used the rocks in another painting in the end, but I really liked what I did with those rocks and I want to do more of it. Um, very reminiscent of like what I would see in Muskoka with all the like layers that they've busted through. I think it's really neat. Cool. Yeah, Grok, only if you have some time. Thank you. Because I'll be looking for like copyright free images that maybe people give me permission to use or whatnot. And I'll take some of my own and use some different sites that are copyright free as well. So I just want to like, honestly, I want to start collecting that for when I'm ready. Because once that shop is open, I think I'm going to like deep dive into making more art, not like I don't make enough, but like doing these things that I've been talking about for so long. My art. Focus on series, subject matter, things like that. All right, you can see how the stars are adding and adding and adding and we keep going. Yep, Flick is so smart, mm-hmm. Yep, it's been uh, many years, Joe, of like teaching large groups of people in person about flicking paint and realizing that a lot of the techniques are quite messy and I don't want to clean up all of their mess. <laughs> so it's like, all right, here's how you do it without uh, as much mess. Thank you. And this was the best. And even the hand thing, I was like, all right, guys, you got to go around like this. <laughs> Be careful, please. <laughs> yeah, I use a toothbrush. Chrissy and I always joke that I steal Frederick's toothbrush. stars. <laughs> how dare. Oh, that would be so bad. Why does my toothbrush taste funny? Don't worry about it. Bad, bad, bad. Okay, that's probably good there. And then what you can do if you want, oh my goodness, uh, is add some. <gasps> oh, I just pushed my tower. Are we still alive? Yes, we are. Yikes. 
All the computer people are upset by that one. Ooh, okay. Um, <laughs> this whole tower, the whole computer tower is some... <laughs> anyway, uh, yeah, wipe off your fingers. Uh, and then you can add some manual stars, manual stars, uh, ones that you're not flicking on. You can control a little bit more about where they're going. Add gas, got it, yeah. <gasps> oh, isn't it better now? <gasps> okay. Uh, small brush. That last one was kind of like a choke. It wasn't a gas, but it was like, <laughs> gross. Yeah, I'm using a tiny brush. I'm using some white paint and you can just literally dot some on and that'll create some nice bright kind of medium size or bigger stars. You can kind of, again, place them wherever you want. You can make some uh, constellations if you'd like. I'm just going to randomly put them on. Um, well, there was the black and white lighthouse. That was the one that I posted to YouTube. It was a lighthouse and I wanted, it was the one with the egg in the sky. Actually, um, I did choose it to see if I can sell it because it's just kind of sitting around right now. Um, it was, the sky was very impressionistic with all the small little brush strokes and it was kind of like pinks and purples and stuff all just ch -ch 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 -ch. Uh, the lighthouse was, I don't think it was black and white, maybe it was, but I think the one you're thinking of is the stripy black and white one, potentially. It was a smaller lighthouse on a big rock. It was like a big flat rock. And then there's the sky. And then the egg is in the sky because I wanted like a sun kind of peeking through the clouds that it turned into an egg. It looks kind of like a fried egg. So I don't know if anyone's interested in that one, but I thought I'd bring it out. <laughs> uh, ream of printer paper. What are you printing? OK, you're thinking of the stripy one. Yeah, that one's on YouTube. I, I should bring it out. I should, um, I could go get it maybe at the end here. Not right now, but I wonder if it would jog your memory. Because I think you were here when I was making it. It was a whole thing. I almost scrapped it, and then I completed it, but I just never taught it. But then I used the rock technique for the camping one. There was a camping one with a tent, a different camping tent one. And I used the rock technique for that one. Of the mini canvases, like, uh... Like the ones behind me? Which ones are you thinking of? Oh, like the desserts? Sure. I, uh, <laughs> I actually didn't need to paint those edges. Those are hanging up on my wall. I would consider those, though, if there was interest. Do you have any ones that you're thinking of? Or the avocado and stuff? There's all these little ones that I forget about, like things that are hanging up and just around. So if anyone, uh... Oh, the mini rain! Oh! I wasn't planning on it, honestly. Again, that's another one that's kind of just in a little pile right now. I had this thought slash dream that I would eventually finish those dough, because that was technically part of the Buntober series that I never really did. <laughs> All of you did, and I did not. Uh, <laughs> and I kind of have this thought of, like, I still want to complete it. I just don't think I ever will. So I'm kind of like hanging on to them and I don't know if I should or not. I would sell that one if uh, there was interest. I have a couple bigger rainy ones though, for sure. I want to flick some paint and watercolor over a small, uh, I mask the rest of it. Oh, a small area, okay. Uh, how to fix the long drops of white paint that didn't flick well. Uh, you can just take, depending on where they are, um, more likely than not, maybe it dripped into like a darker area. I would just take your bluish red and just cover it up, let it dry, and then you can flick a couple more uh, dots on top. Yeah. Wow. <laughs> I remember hearing words about a series of food and stuff on small cams. Well, there's the desserts. What, what else did I say, Grok? I don't remember. Like, uwu food? Uwu food, uwu food. Um... I have the ubu desserts that I would absolutely make into prints as well, because I think those are a cute little print set of four. Um, and if there was interest, I could throw them up as well. I think as a set of four, I think it would be cute to sell them all like that. Ubu food, yeah! <laughs> a lot of people haven't seen those, because I painted those like a year ago on stream, and they're actually hanging up in my apartment. I kind of like where they are, but I could create more. I'd happily give those away if uh, someone was interested. Uh, also chat if I get one of the Ohio trips I apply for, I'm just gonna get my own. Oh, nice, Todd, nice. Yeah, oh, we want more! Do you want more desserts or just, like, food in general? Huh. I don't even remember saying that. It was so long ago, honestly. I probably did, though. I can make more and then I don't. 
So I made the avocado and then I stopped. And that guy's, that guy's still there. He's kind of different though. He's a little more uwu than the rest of them. He's very sparkly uwu. The other ones are very simplified uwu. I don't even have a photo of them anywhere. Like I didn't post those to Instagram or anything. I gotta advertise those babies. They're cute. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah, in general, okay. Yeah, maybe sets of them, like green foods or something that I could start to make little little sets of four. Okay, okay. Yeah. Maybe uh maybe is around two. I can't commit to making any more things before the shop opens. I have ones I need to complete still that are like in progress, right? <laughs> Can't start to do more uwu foods, but I can obviously do them for future for sure. Yeah, sets of three or four. I like the four because they go in a nice uh, one, two, three, four. Three are nice in a row, I find though, or like up and down as well. That's true. Threes are nice. Yeah, threes might be good too. Yeah, I'll think about it. I'll do more of those. I just don't know if I'll be able to do them before I open up. Okay, I think I've added enough stars here, everybody. So I'm just going to leave a quick minute in case anyone's adding more. And then I will add the trees next. We gotta do a little work on the trees. Uh, yeah, we're gonna put the black down first and then do the trees. But yeah, anyway, I got a plan, I got a plan. Columbus has an art scene, that's exciting. <laughs> Ooh, woo clouds. You know, <laughs> that's what it was. I was um, fixing up the jellyfish painting I don't know if you remember, but at the end of the jellyfish tutorial, I took the uh, second painting. I made uwu jellyfish and I almost debated including that one because I was like, I think people like this one too. <laughs> Maybe more so than the regular jellyfish, <laughs> like the rainbow jellyfish I did. I was like, I think someone would probably go for uwu over non. <laughs> so, and then chicken noodles just bouncing away on the side here. It's very, uh, <laughs> it's very unique and customized, <laughs> but I wonder if someone would want that one. So I could touch that one up too if needed. Or just customize the original and make it uwu. Yeah, it was cute. I really liked him. <laughs> Pokey knows Columbus. It's a collectible for sure. <laughs> Maybe I'll throw it on. It just seems funny listing both of them being like jellyfish, uwu jellyfish. <laughs> One's priced differently. Yeah, very rare. It's a shiny. It's a first edition. Yeah, and there's some things that honestly I'm sticking in there that are more so like, you know, fun on stream things. Like I uh, I dove back into those uh, paint pours that we did like over a year ago and I was like, these ones maybe too, yeah. Yeah, ooh, ooh jellyfish, rare. <laughs> Brackets rare. <laughs> non hollow rare. But yeah, first edition for sure. All of these are first editions. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna start to add black real quick. Um, I want to add it relatively fast to the middle here just because we have a tent to add and we want to make sure the black is nice and dry before we start to add the tent on. We have to do a white um, coat as I usually do and then the yellow orange. So I'm going to quickly put black mainly in the middle. I will use the large flat brush just to go a little quicker and then we can concentrate more so on the actual trees after. But for now we're just going to stick the black on in the middle so it can dry the fastest. Yeah, shiny, sparkly, rare. First pull from pack of 52. All right, so I'm just putting on some black, trying to really, uh, you can see, uh, brush it out so it's nice and even, nice and thin, so it dries relatively fast. As long as you're getting this middle part first, I would do that first. No ridges, that's why I'm going back and forth. And then I can concentrate on putting black everywhere else. So I'm just going to continue to um, cover up the gap here, this nice exposed canvas. And then what we're going to do is we're going to bring the treetops up and then it'll all kind of look seamless after. So we're just kind of doing the boring work right now of covering up what is remaining. And I'm trying not to touch the middle. I might kind of blend a little bit in there just to spread some paint, but again, I'm trying to leave it alone so it dries. If you're not rushed for time, of course, you don't really need to worry as much about this. You'll just need to make sure you're leaving time for it to dry. So I'm just trying to be as efficient as possible. Hey, Lumpy, hello. Welcome in. We're doing a nice camping galactic stars painting today. Hello. Teaching as usual on a Friday. How was your week? 
Are there any other rare paintings that people are thinking of <laughs> that maybe I forgot about that you'd be interested in seeing in the store or maybe think that others would be interested in? Because again, I feel like even though I looked through pretty much all my paintings, there's still some that are probably hanging up or in a different pile or whatnot that I could bring out. It's hard to remember all the ones I've done. I Like, I even forgot about the ones on the wall till like, minutes ago. I was like, oh wait, I have those too. Like, one of those is a nice palette knife one. I like the- yeah, I like the flowers. Anyway, I'll deal with those later. <laughs> deal with you later. Oh, are people interested in the cinnamon buns? Like, that's one I would need to complete, but like, I don't know if anyone actually wants the cinnamon buns. I know that's kind of like a meme from so long ago. I had a cinnamon bun painting that I worked on for like, stream after stream after stream, and it was just fun. Just talking about cinnamon buns and painting them. But I'm not even done it. I just don't know if I want to spend a lot of time on it with the limited time I have. Big noodle in front of the scarecrow is pretty rare. Oh, true! That's gonna be up there. See, I haven't looked through those ones. Those are the those are the ones I'm gonna find up there. Yep, you are. You are. He pokes in from the corner. <laughs> They're all up on the top shelf because it's all the ones I did like secondhand. But there's fun ones in there like that. Yeah, Fika. I need to complete it. I know. I know. I just don't know if I want to prioritize completing it or leave it for another time. But I do. Need, I'm not gonna throw it away or anything. I'm not going to stop forever. It's more so like should I do it the next couple of weeks. Uh, Lumpy, this week has, uh, was heavy lifting again, but also extra productive. Things are coming. I've stepped up being selected to replace my boss. Whoa, Lumpy, wow. Great opportunity, yeah, to get experience. Wow, yeah, good for you. I'm sure you'll rock it. I'm sure there's a reason you're selected. Yeah, there, that's what I was missing. Yes, <laughs> chicken noodle. <laughs> no rush, okay. That's what I figured. I feel like not a lot of people have mentioned and or waiting for that one. I can make them ooh, cinnamon bun, sure. <laughs> I'll just all of a sudden turn them all ooh, ooh. All the paintings I have just ooh, 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 ooh. All right, so again, we have a base of black, so I'm really trying my best not to touch in here. I'll still fix up kind of the tops of these trees, but no need to go in here now. And what I can do is kind of just use this, even though technically in the painting I have the trees coming all the way to the bottom, I can kind of pretend this is a horizon line and just create tops of trees. Even though, of course, battery, even though later we will be uh, carrying them all the way down the canvas. Okay. Battery is causing me trouble. I don't know if these are fully charged, so we'll see about them. Come on back. Awesome. All right. Oh, heck, I know this is a while ago, but do you remember the whole we're going to quit our jobs? Oh, I remember. <laughs> oh, really, Joe? Wow. Did things ever let up after all of that? Like it was like busy week, busy week, busy month, busy life. Did it ever let? I assume not if you're quitting. Congratulations. I assume that's all good things that you've done there. Long see with their old friend. Oh, good. I'm glad, Lumpy. Ah, uh, again, Charlene, I'll think about that. I know you've mentioned that a couple times now. I think that would be quite tiresome for me to do all at once. I can consider, though. Yeah, I think that's quite kind of a movement right now, Lumpy. All right, so if you're ready to do some trees with me, as I said, I'm kind of pretending this is almost a horizon line and then we're just doing tops of trees, even though we will be making them all big trees later. Um, so I'm gonna use the medium round brush for that. You can use a variety of brushes for trees, use whatever one you like, but I'm gonna use the medium round. And I'm gonna start just by doing a trunk. That's how I always start off my trees, just a nice quick trunk. And because of the perspective of this painting, I like to kind of lean the trees in a little bit because we're kind of looking like, out and up a little bit. So all these trees are maybe like curving into the center a little bit. So I've kind of curved this in. And as I get further to the right, I'm also going to make them smaller as if they're further away, but these ones are nice and close. We're almost like in a little opening of sorts. So you're welcome to either map out all of the trees at once, do all of the uh, trunks, or you can do one at a time. I'm gonna do one at a time just so I can really space them the way I want. So after I do a trunk, I'm using the medium round brush with black paint. I've kind of flattened out the brush a little bit. You can see how it's a little flatter now. That's kind of two sides there. 
And I just use the uh, the flat edge and the tip of the brush. And I just kind of tap as I move down the top there. Here, I'll bring this a little closer. A little hard to see on the dark purple, but it'll be a little more obvious as I get to the lighter colors. I'm just tapping. As I get further down, I'll start tapping and moving left and right. You can see how the branches are starting to come through a little bit. Tap, 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 left, tap, tap, right, tap, tap, left, tap, tap, right. And as I get further down, the branches come further out. So you can see how they're all starting to get a little bit longer. And I kind of tilt them down a little bit too. So I'm not bringing them straight out. I find that looks a little bit too, like a little T. Instead, I kind of curve them down as if they're getting a little heavier, right? They're holding on to lots of stuff as they get bigger and bigger. So they're getting heavier and heavier. And then eventually I'm just going to reach the black area here, at which point I can stop. All right, so it all just kind of comes in and then all of a sudden it's all all plain in there. So the idea is I want to keep these trees pretty tight together because I want to make them look like they're all kind of colliding just before this horizon line here. And then that way it'll make sense that it's all dark down here, right? So just put it relatively close. And as long as the branches start to touch before the open sky ends, then you're good. So I'm going to maybe place one right here. I'll catch up and chat in a second. I see you guys zoom in. Feel free to keep chatting. I'm gonna make this guy a little taller actually. You can just kind of tap your brush, make it a little a little taller, and then maybe go back and forth a little extra to get your branches a little bit bigger. There we go. All right, and I'll do the second one. Same idea. So I flatten my brush and just kind of tapping down the trunk and then moving a little left and right as I go. And you can see it's starting to touch even like about halfway down. And that way, by the time I'm getting all the way down here, you can see the br the branches are very much crisscrossing and just starting to cover each other up. And then it makes sense that there's, again, no more sky all the way down here. So I'm just going to continue that trend all the way around. All right, let's see y'all chatting about here. <laughs> claps people claps for joe <laughs> quitting <laughs> i'm doing good thanks lumpy i was uh offline for a couple days there i made progress on uh cleaning up some paintings for the shop i was talking about how i painted the edges of 40 plus paintings because i'm a i'm a bad painter and even though i give people the advice of painting their edges as they paint i never did so i had to spend all that time cleaning up the edges <laughs> um and then i plan on taking photos next so yeah things are still moving along with me and uh, yeah, getting excited about progress that I'm seeing here with uh, getting this thing open. I'm seeing the uh, the light at the end of the tunnel after all this. It felt like I was so far away from it all, but now it's uh, it's all coming together, Kronk. Mm -hmm. What's your biology experiment, Todd? Getting more work without any more pay. Yeah, and I had a company reach out to me, the job for me. Yo, that's sick. We were just talking about this a little bit earlier, too, how uh, it's pretty rare. People were talking about how long they had been at their jobs, Joe, and people were saying 10 years, 15 years, and I was like, it just doesn't happen anymore. And, uh, yeah, I think it was, it was Wood who said it's because other companies are just offering more, and I was like, you're right, and this is the prime example. Someone was like, hey, you have talent, and you should be paid for it, we're going to pay you this, and you're like, heck yeah, thank you for paying me what I'm worth. And you say goodbye to your original company and move the heck on because uh yeah it's just it's just rare i find that people value um the people that they already have they'd rather just retrain which is pretty bizarre to me they don't want to just stick with who they know also adding the tree and stars really oh yeah i told you those stars and then the trees kind of set the setting yes it could even just be a painting with the trees i think but the uh the tent is a nice touch as well for those who like camping Oh, sorry, dude. Yeah, it's not open yet. <laughs> I'll get all those commands in there. I'll do all of them. I'll do shop. I'll do store. I'll do anything possible. <laughs> it's not open yet. I'm just uh, starting to see the light at the end of the tunnel in terms of uh, getting it all done. I'm, uh, I don't want to say when because I'm going to like jinx it. Something's going to happen. But when I get a date really, really confidently, I'll tell everybody and it'll probably be like a few weeks from when I tell you, you know, I'll be like, date is whenever and it'll be like three weeks from then. So we'll have time to get excited. 
It'll be a big thing. I think if you're at all looking for it, you will not miss it. It'll be everywhere. I have full intentions to blast everything with it because it's been such a long time coming. I know a lot of you have been waiting a long time, so thanks for that. And I've just been taking my dang time. <laughs> Honestly, though, it's because I want to do it right. <laughs> I think you all understand and appreciate that at this point, but... Yeah, thank you for your patience. Oh my god. Making some good decisions here. Making good progress. <clears throat> Phrases just don't exist. Yeah, yeah, they, or they do, but it's like the, the crappiest minimal thing. Yeah, you gotta have more jobs and make more money, which is a bummer for sure. Beyond paid companies will do, uh, will need to do more to make everyday life at work better. I think so too. I think that's more of the movement right now, Lumpy. You're right. People are starting to realize that, uh, they don't want to waste an hour plus of their life, two hours of their life a day driving somewhere when they know perfectly well now that they can do what they need to do at home. There are some jobs you can, of course, but yeah, I think people are realizing that, hey, I can do this properly at home. Work-life balance is a lot better if you're able to handle working at home. Oh yeah, it's better. Yeah, I think a lot of uh, a lot of uh, people are going to be demanding that now. Some sort of good balance of either needing come co needing to come into the office maybe like once or twice a week, if needed, or just saying I'm remote, dude, deal with it. I don't know. We'll see. Yeah, yeah, Joe. It's uh, <laughs> I'm making those steps. It's all slow, but it's okay. I keep saying it and joking about it, but um, it is very exciting. Thank you. It's uh. I think it's been a long time too because it's not something I truly really expected to be doing. You know, I didn't set out with the idea that I'd be selling art. This was truly more of the tutorial aspect, which I'm still doing, as you can see. I don't plan on letting up on that. I might shift focus a little bit once the store is open, of course, because I need income. I can't do this for free forever. Um, but yeah, I never really thought it would lead to people being like, hey, I like your art and want to buy it. And I've just, I've heard it enough at this point that I'm like, maybe they're right. <laughs> maybe, uh, they're not lying to me anymore. <laughs> I just never thought people would want to buy the art. It was more so I can teach it. And then, yeah, it shifted. So it is cool. Thanks. Yeah, that too. Work-life balance is non-existent in my current place. Yikes. And chemistry running the big uh, ventilation costs a lot, so we have very fixed hours. Yeah, so like, yeah, you need to go in at certain points for sure. Oh, you're saying, but like they kick you out almost lumpy, is that it? It's almost nicer, and then it's like, well, <laughs> clock strikes five, I'm out. But yeah, I think people's eyes have just opened up a little bit with, uh, it's good. It means that uh, they have a little more self-worth and they're like, you know, I am needed here. People will pay me more, and I should have more flexibility to live my own life as well. Uh, what is it? Like, don't, don't live to work, work to live? No, don't. Don't work to live, live to work. You shouldn't be working just to stay alive, you should be working because you want to. Uh, the pandemic will have one highlight for me and it's Twitch. This channel is certainly one of my secret nook on the internet. Thanks, Lumpy. Yeah, dude, pandemic isn't over either. <laughs> this is still my highlight of the pandemic. It's still going for me. Um, but yeah, I can relate. Hey, Vlogiston! Don't make the same mistake as Bob Ross. What is that? What was his mistake? Tell me now. What did he do, Vlogiston? All right, so you can see how that's magically kind of molded together. It no longer hopefully looks like a big kind of lump of black at the bottom. It's more so the trees just kind of moving together. And we're actually going to add some green on them as well to really accentuate the fact that they continue down. There's nothing wrong with it like ending here if you like the idea of this being on a hill maybe, but I personally liked the idea of being surrounded by trees. So I'm going to bring these down, down, down. So they're all like right at us a little bit later. So we can't do more than nine hours in a day, which is our- Yeah, it is! Tap out after eight. Gotcha! The yeah, epidemic is still in full effect. Sadly, comes just like, we want butts and seats. I get it. Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot of things going on right now. I'm getting so many festival emails. I'm on, like, all the email lists for, like, big music festivals, and they are going full force for, like, two months from now. And I'm like, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> 
Like they're all happening at the same time too. They all delayed this year. They couldn't wait another year. And they were like, September's our go month. All of them are like September, October even, I think. Isn't it Coachella October? I think Coachella was maybe a little later, but they announced in like April that they're doing it in fall. Anyway, I couldn't. <laughs> yeah, not selling his works and paying the bills with books. Oh, okay. I didn't realize he never sold his works, Augustin. That's interesting. Well, I'm not even paying the bills with books. <laughs> I'm paying the bills with Twitch and I will be selling my work. So that's good. I'm not making the full same mistake. No, I totally miss them, Joe. I uh, I was huge into going to those. That's There's a reason I'm on all those festival email lists. But uh, no, I'm very much in the mindset where I'm not cool with it quite yet. Don't think I'll be cool with it in September. Um, yeah, I have a ticket that I'm still trying to fight with the company to refund. And they're like, oh, there was a small two week window where you could refund it. And it doesn't look like you did that even though we rescheduled the concert like three times throughout the pandemic and you're supposed to keep up with that, you missed the two week window. So I'm sorry, but you still own this ticket. You can sell it if you want. I'm like, oh my God, who's gonna buy it? <laughs> what can go wrong? December, my, the concert I have, I think is for October. And I was kind of like, I'm not down to commit to that. I just want to get rid of the ticket. I helped translate a saucy dating sim stream. Oh, okay. Have fun, Lumpy. That sounds like a fun time. Yes. See you later. A saucy dating sim stream. Okay. Have fun translating. Okay. Uh, while we have this dry black, I want to get the white tent on. We need to do one coat of white, and then we can concentrate on the green of the trees, and then we're going to go back to the tent to finish it off. Yeah, I miss concerts terribly. It's concerts and movies for me, going to the movies. I feel like that'll come sooner, but concerts I'm still not cool with. It's the bodies. It's the sweaty bodies in a room. It's just like, ugh. All right, so I'm going to add a white tent to begin with. Um, so you can do whatever shape tent you want. I kind of went with this dome tent. I had a reference from, uh, from Gray. I think it was actually in like the snow or something but yeah it was more of a dome tent and I liked that a little bit better I thought it was a little more unique than like the triangular tent which I've done before as well so I wanted to switch it up uh, but yeah I place it right in the middle uh, and yeah it kind of starts with a dome shape so it's kind of um it's kind of triangular but rounded you could kind of think of it that way it's kind of like a nice rounded triangle you can see it in here with a couple tiny extra details so I'm just looking at that shape and then I add a tiny flap down there that's kind of like pinned down in the ground so yeah anywhere in the middle I'm just gonna mark the middle, maybe mark the top here. Mark the bottom. The bottom is very close to the bottom of the canvas. Um, yeah, so I'm just going to kind of curve down to the left. Looks like the black is still a tiny bit wet, which is not an issue. If we have like gray showing up, it's not a big deal. We love gray. Let's fill that in for now. We can just see how it's looking. You can make it a little bigger as you go. Definitely needs to be wider. I'm gonna widen her out a little bit here. Well, let's just say the VODs are getting deleted 10 seconds after stream. See how Peppa hangs up. <laughs> I hate when people just say that's going to be easy, but nobody knows. Did I just say that? Or are you talking about something else, Augustine? This part will be easy. Gray showing up. Okay. Yeah, as I said, we love Gray. We don't mind that she's in our painting a bit. So yeah, I'm just slowly widening it out until I have the shape I like. Again, you can do whatever shape you want. That's probably good. And then the bottom just kind of is a nice little curve. Again, it's kind of, again, a rounded triangle. So we're curving it all like that. I need to look maybe straight. Yeah, I'm going to look straight at it for a second. Get this a little more even. You can even use the black paint to shape it up again if maybe you made it a little big or a little wide. Very easy to fix up. Just use black around the edges and just kind of chop off whatever white or gray you don't want. I'm a fan of just making it bigger though. 
I just grow it until it's a it's a good shape. Trying to keep the top a little rounder. It's a thick ten. And same thing, just to like increase drying time, just kind of smoothing everything out. You can see how I'm just using full width of my brush, pressing down and just smoothing the paint out. Even if I'm still working on the edges, I can do that in the middle and that'll help it dry a little quicker. Again, there's no real rush if you're not on a time constraint. I'm just trying to keep this as uh, smooth as possible for everybody. I think it's just like... All right, something like that, nice big dome. And then the only other piece I add is just a little flap at the bottom. I'm just gonna move it up. It's gonna be right at the bottom. It's just kind of like another triangular shape. It comes down, comes down. If you don't like that flap, you don't need to add it, of course. Just kind of shows that the tent is kind of pinned down though, kind of right at the entrance way. So straight line, straight line. Mine kind of fell off the canvas a bit, but that's okay. So that's the basic shape of the tent. Again, you can use some black paint if you need to carve anything up and fix anything up. Very easy to do. You'll just go like right here, for example. There we go. Smooth it out. Or maybe you got it perfect the first try, in which case you don't need to do that. But yeah, that's a, that's a nice gray tent. Again, the goal was white, but it turned gray, and that's okay. I have a few grays showing up on my head. <laughs> not a shower that's correct so we'll leave that there uh we have next some green so we need to let this dry that's why we're distracting ourselves with another step right now and we do have one more step aside from the tent um so yeah optional step if you like the very dark black trees you can keep them dark uh but instead i like to add some greenery i hope you can see that i'm sure you can yeah in here um, I just kind of dot on some darker greens on the very edges of each tree, either the right hand side on the left or the left hand side on the right because we're reflecting the light off of the branches there, right? So any of the closest branches. And all I do is I make a nice dark green and I kind of just tap with my brush anywhere again, like on those uh, on those two sides. So nothing fancy. Um, I'm not, yeah, I'm not doing any, uh, detailed like leaves or anything like that it's all just a uh, very splotched on dotted on green so i'm going to keep using the same brush uh and then we're going to mix blue and yellow if you have paint like me you can also add a little bit of white not necessarily to make it lighter just to again help with opacity there not going to be as transparent if we add some white so i added just a wee bit but in the end, I still want it to be a pretty dark green. I don't want it really popping off of the canvas. I want it to be just kind of subtle. Uh, and then I'm just using the brush and literally going along, yeah, the right hand side at the beginning here. And then I'll switch to the left hand side on the other side, just tapping onto some of these branches here. So just using the branches I already have, the shapes that I already have there and lightly tapping on some color. Not trying to really blob it on. I think I used the term blob before, but I wouldn't wouldn't literally blob the paint on. It's very lightly tapping. And then the key to get the look that I have in the original is that you want to continue this down. So even though we kind of stopped the trees at the horizon line that we had, we are now going to pretend the trees continue all the way down. And you're just kind of like tapping as if the branches continue. So very messily, kind of in rows, you know, you can see I kind of go back and forth a little bit, but hopefully you can see as well, it's quite messy. It's not like these are all very perfect lines here. It's all just very messy, trying to hit the right hand edge of this tree continuing down. So you're going to make these longer and longer and longer right up next to the tent. I know that several times when people say that's going to be easy because when they say that's suddenly difficulty. I see, I see. Yeah, I wasn't sure if I said it, Flogiston. I was like, oh, I don't want to pretend it's easy for all it might be easy for me but not for all but yes i know what you mean oh i swear it's easy it'll be fine isn't easy yeah 
right, so just let me continue that on each and every tree here, just very lightly tapping. And again, remember you're going on the right hand side and then you're switching to the left when you reach the middle and go past. Just think of whatever side is closest to the tent. And the green might get a little messy after you add a bunch, but that's okay. I think you'll kind of see what's going on. The viewer will understand that it's because the trees start to really congregate at the bottom there. So don't worry about keeping things too clean as they get further down to the bottom. We'll get a little squishy and messy. Yeah, as long as you're tapping on top of the black, you can see it makes it look just like a subtle, subtle green color there. Well, guess who's got two thumbs and open all our subscription boxes? Not you, it couldn't be you. This gal, I got a couple of things that I don't know exactly what they are, how to use them, but lots of cool. Do you want to describe them? I'm curious on what the heck they are. Things that you have no idea what they are. That's fun though. Cause you would have never picked those up otherwise. Got a little green in there, that's okay. And if you have a tree dead in the middle, just, just tap everywhere in it. There's no real rule there, just tap wherever. I'm sure the light can hit wherever it wants if the tree's right in the middle. All right, so I switched the left-hand side now of each tree. So just tapping on the left-hand branches, lightly, lightly, lightly going down. I got a graphinit paint set. I, uh, I don't know. Graphitint, is that right? Graphitint. <laughs> Okay, I think I treat like watercolor. Uh, maybe I I don't know. <laughs> Why did I think I would know? I'm not I'm not well rehearsed in all the materials and supplies and brands. Let us know how it goes. I'm if you have a picture of it, maybe in Discord. Graphite and it's a whoa. I have no clue then. But like activate with water and use a brush. I could kind of imagine that. Oh, I'm really curious now too, Gray. That's uh, that's quite interesting. Hmm. I just want a photo of it. Are they like little pucks, like a watercolor set? All right, last tree. You can see I'm getting probably progressively messier too with each one. I'm just like, ah. Yeah, because it kind of looks nice messy. It doesn't need to be uniform. There's so much foliage, so many trees. The light's probably hitting off everywhere. So as long as it's tapped on just very sporadically and lightly. And I'm not using a lot of paint too. It's very kind of dry brushy as well. I, I don't know to say dry brushing, but it's just very softly coming off in spots. Um, if you want to amp it up another level, you could even do this again with an even lighter green and go a little more subtle. Um, I'm just going to do that because it appears I did that with more of a yellowy green. I just maybe like tapped on kind of like at the very edges of a couple just to really get some light in the uh, the lightest areas. So kind of looking at closer to the tent, so further down the tree. And again, just sporadically tapping that on, just very minimally though. We don't want to overpower it. You can see how these differ from these. These are a little bit more poppy now. Makes sense again. Closer to the light, they're going to be a lot lighter. So anywhere closer down the tent. My gray is still a little bit wet, so I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes. Just leaving everybody time to keep working on trees if they want to. And then we want to swirl on some color. We're going to swirl on some yellow, some orange, of course. You can see a nice like reddish orange around the edge. And then we're using black to just add some details in the tent. It makes it look like it kind of has the zipper edge there. Some little sides and edges to the tent. So yeah, I'm going to make sure this is a little bit drier than it is now. It's very annoying to uh, 
throw on a second layer when the first one isn't wet, it's obviously very problematic, so just give it some time. <laughs> give it a couple extra minutes when you think it's done too, because sometimes it's like dry to the touch, but even underneath sometimes it's a little bit wetter. So give it some time, give it a rest. Yeah, I'm curious about the graphite thing though. I had some photos to live stream. Okay, for you to see later, awesome. Because I can, again, I can't really, <laughs> I have no idea. I've never seen it before, but I can kind of imagine. Um, a Marabou art crayons and acrylic ink. Ooh, like acrylic pens? I don't know what acrylic ink would be. And I don't know what Marabou is. I don't know anything, apparently. I should get a subscription box and learn, man. <laughs> I don't know any of these. Oh, I'm just looking at the galaxy in the Twitch stream. I like this one better. I like the big one better. After all that, I was so nervous about it. Marabou. Hmm. I should plug this one in, hold on. I have batteries, I gotta keep track of them. <clears throat> How are you doing, paint? It's like when I want it to dry, it won't. Still a tiny bit sticky, I'll keep leaving it. Sketchbox is pretty cool. Is that the one you have, Gray? Gray does a couple subscription boxes. Acrylic ink is very thin, almost water, so I don't know how to use that. I guess like watercolor too. Um... No, it's not a- no. I was gonna say, I thought I- I thought I maybe had seen art using it, but I think I saw some using alcohol ink. I follow a few artists on Instagram, I think, and they use alcohol ink, not acrylic ink. But they do the cool, like, floral designs. I don't know if you've seen those where, like, you can blow around the ink and then it dries where it's very soft in the middle, but it has kind of like a harsher edge. So I've seen a lot of people use it for, like, petals and flowers. They'll keep blowing further out and further out and creating more and more edges. It's a really neat look. There's quite a few um, accounts on Instagram that I have that do that, and I've always wanted to experiment. And then they add, like, metallic golds in there and silvers, and it makes it look uh, beautiful. Fancy, fancy. Still a little shiny. Scrawler box from the UK, palateful packs, and inky box. <laughs> inky box is a cute name. <laughs> inky box. Huh, Sketchbox sounds familiar. I thought maybe you had that one, but maybe I've just heard of it elsewhere. Do you do that one, Vlogiston? Sketchbox? Okay. Inky box. <laughs> I don't know why it's so cute. Oh, you guys made me inky box. Scrawler box. I think that was the one with the snacks in it. Just a little sticky. I'll give it like two more minutes on my end. If you guys need more time, just hold off until it's dry. Wouldn't want you uh, swirling around any gray paint as a... Uh, just because you rushed a bit. Sketchbox is pretty popular, but they weren't available to ship in Canada. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah, maybe I saw it advertised to me or something. It's uh, it's in my brain for some reason, but I've never subscribed, so I don't know. Sketchbox. Yeah, it's, uh, it's usually what happens, isn't it? Can't ship to Canada. We've got options now. We got some stuff. Oh, okay, Flogason. All right. So you like it enough that you've done it a couple months. I assume that's good. Yeah, I've never really been into subscription boxes. The only one I have, I think, is the snack box, and that's really for stream. I don't know if I've ever had any otherwise. I like knowing what I'm ordering, <laughs> I guess. <laughs> they do have good deals, though. Anytime they're advertised to me, I'm like, oh, dang. I can see the value in it. I think I'm just worried I wouldn't use it. Use the stuff that I get. I'd use a food one, probably. 
As I do with the snacks, of course. I've already proven myself on that one. But like, there's wine ones and cheese ones. I would do those. <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> I almost grabbed my jug to drink and that's not correct. <coughs> Bam. All right. I'm going to do the middle of the tent now. Um, mine is still a tiny bit sticky, but I'm just going to go with a light hand and hope it works here just to make sure I'm ending relatively on time. So if, uh, yeah, if your tent is not dry, just let it dry a couple more minutes. If you're on YouTube, pause me, do something else. Uh, yeah, we're going to start in the middle. And I'm using my medium round brush, of course. I'm just mixing yellow and white together to create a nice bright yellow. Look for a whole bunch and try to find one that's cheaper in price for value. UK one even with price difference was the best I found. Wow. Yeah, I was wondering why you ordered all the way from UK. I didn't know if it was like better products or something, but wow. <laughs> It's still best price, that's pretty crazy, despite all the shipping. Alright, so I have a nice buttery yellow. I'm gonna try and very softly apply it, I'm just kind of like lightly wiping it, but you can... Yeah, see if I swirl it's gonna be problematic. <laughs> ah! Yeah, I could have waited a couple more minutes. Really what I want to be doing is swirling this on, that's the easiest way to do it, kind of like spin, spin, spin. The reason that I'm avoiding doing that is because my bristles really rub against the paint as I do it, so that's why I'm doing this nice soft, like, adding like this. But yeah, if you swirl it and then swirl on the next color and the next color, it makes it very easy to blend. But I'm gonna do it the harder way and just, like, softly lay it on and blend it in. So once I have some yellow in the middle, I'm just adding a little bit of red to my yellow mixture to make more of a light orange. And I'm adding that around the yellow. And again, you can ignore my messiness in doing this. Oh, this is covering much better. That's good. <clears throat> I've added it around the yellow and then you can blend it in. Again, if my background wasn't so wet, this would be a lot easier. But you want to just swirl it in. Maybe let's do that and then I can maybe re-add some yellow. Let's see if that works. I should have waited a couple more minutes. This is what happens when you don't follow your own advice. <laughs> oh dear. All right, so I'm gonna keep trying to blend it my way rather than swirling, because that's not gonna work. It's gonna be a very rough tent. Not gonna be as smooth as my original. Hello, Lindsay! Thank you for following! Just finishing up an acrylic painting tutorial. It's actually going a little awry right now because <laughs> my yellow is mixing with my gray. I gotta let it dry more. You know what I could do? I could wipe it off and let it dry a little bit more. Let's do that. Learn from my mistakes. Don't do it too early. I'm going to wipe this off so it dries a little quicker. I might just need to wait a minute or two and then we're gonna try it again. That's what you do. Just try it again if it doesn't work. Let's do that. Oh, that'll be much better. And it's still kind of grayer, so that's fine. All right. That's what you get for rushing. I'll leave it for a second. Do, 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 do. No, Baron's best tip is don't drink the paint water. Yes, don't drink the jug of paint. Mm-hmm. Gotta take off. I'll finish tomorrow. Good night, Jules. Thanks for hanging out. Yeah. Yeah, it's a tent in a hurricane. It's just getting a little wild. The lights are off. It looks so sad now. <laughs> oh, poor thing. All right, yeah, I'll leave that for a couple minutes. It's already, yeah, it's kind of like tacky at this point, but I gotta let it dry a little bit more. So the art crayons, I can treat them like oil pastels, but they are water soluble, so I can add water to them or shave pieces. Oh, shave pieces off uh, and do different colors. Ooh, that sounds cool. I like that, kind of using them as pigment. See you, Kate, if you gotta go, no worries. Have a good evening. I'll contact you soon about your prints and stuff that you uh, got from the subathon. Whee! Okay. It's hard not to touch it. Do, 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 do. 
I could use a blow dryer at this point, but I won't. That'll be the dream if one day I can have a blow dryer in here. I just don't have enough electrical outlets, and I don't want to transport my hair dryer back and forth, back and forth. Make a fan. Got my universal yum scoreboards. <laughs> I feel like this will do almost nothing, but I'll, I'll use it. I still say I should just go to the dollar store and get one of those mini fans. I think those would be great. Just like shooting it at the one spot. <laughs> Stiff. There we go. I think it's going into the microphone. I think it's going whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. <laughs> we don't want that. I hope not. They plug into a USB so you don't have to worry. Oh! I just want like a little battery one. Oh, okay. On my uh, sound, it's uh, it says it's being picked up, but that's okay. <laughs> I keep your whoosh whoosh. <laughs> I hear the wind. <laughs> do, 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 do. We have so many fans in chat, doesn't it work? La 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 la. <laughs> All the fans have left because of that. <laughs> Ah, oh, Pizza, you're still with us. I wasn't sure if you were napping. Are you feeling a little better? Do you feel the weakness? <laughs> That's like the biggest thing with me. I always, uh, I told everybody I was so weak I could hardly squeeze the toothpaste on my toothbrush. I felt very, very sad. <laughs> I was like, <laughs> That was the main symptom I had or the after effect. Oh, okay, okay. That's good. That's good. That's probably for the best. You've, uh, you've come back to our mess of a tent because I went too early with my uh, colors. That's that's pretty dry. That's gotta work now. If that doesn't work, I don't know what to do. Yeah, the, yeah. It's just general weakness. It just made me feel so sad. I was just like, oh my god. Ah, uh, thanks, pizza. This will uh, improve it. All right, let's try that again. Maybe it worked for you the first time, but it didn't for me. So here we go. I'm mixing yellow with some white. Whoa, there we go. All right, a nice bright yellow middle. And you can see I'm doing the swirly swirl. That's what I want. There's a tiny bit of gray showing through still, but if I don't play with it too much. I think I can get this right here. Keep the middle nice and bright. Still not as bright as it could be, but we'll get the message across here. So as you have the yellow on the middle, you can add a little more red. Swirl it around. You get kind of an orange. Add a little more red. Swirl it around. Get more of a reddish orange. And eventually it's going to become a very nice bright, bright reddish orange. Let me grab a big chunk there. Hold on. Let's get that color in there. Yeah, like all the way around here. Swirl it in. Yeah, you can see the gray is still kind of affecting. But hopefully you can see the main idea there. Getting a nice reddish orange around the edge here, kind of cleaning it up. You're just covering up any white you see. You're just kind of going over the uh, shape that you've already created. It's kind of that easier part. Oh, there's a nice bright red. I'm just going to stick the red all the way around. It's very nice and bright. And just blending as you go. Again, you can swirl to blend. You can just kind of do small brush strokes, whatever works for you. Let's see if I can get another bright yellow in the middle. It kind of dirtied up again. Uh, so now at the end of your painting, we need to remind you to sign your painting pose for a song. Oh, yes! 
I actually used that recently. I saw the little pose session and uh, I did use that. So that was actually quite useful. I'll do that at the end after my little announcements. Oliver's ice cream, I'm sure he's caught me. I had to spend an hour spinning. Oh boy. <laughs> you got caught up a lot, eh, hipster? Wow. Yeah, it's a thick galaxy. That's what I called it too. It's a thick one. Kind of a thick tent too. It got a little bit bigger. So again, I am fully acknowledging this is not as bright as it could be. Just in the interest of time, I wanted to show you so you're not waiting for my paint to dry. It's never fun to watch paint dry. Really slopping it on. And I don't recommend doing this. It's always a mistake, in my opinion, to like really load on the paint just to try and get it to cover something. It's much better. Just let it dry if it's not going on nicely. So, do as I say, not as I do. It's kind of fun streaky though. I uh, The other one is very smooth, right? It's a very smooth kind of swirl, but it's kind of fun doing it a little bit streakier too. It's all the same look and effect really, from light to dark. Yeah, not bad at all. Get a wee bit more orange on there. Alone. I also want to clean up the bottom here. Because yeah, after this we just have to put some black on it. And again, the black is definitely easier to put on once all this is dry, but I'm just going to go for it to show you the shape if you are ready. There we go. Much better. It's better than it was for sure. Yeah, the Thick Galaxy works a little bit better for me, I think so. It uh, it splits it up more, so it makes it look like it's kind of two different trails. The other one could still be kind of one trail, just kind of like a little separate, but I like how it's a lot, yeah, a lot thicker. You got it. All right, so the last little detail of this painting is just adding some black to the tent. So as I was describing before, I think it just kind of adds like the look of a zipper, just a little more structure. To the tent so I add a couple lines not too many first one I add is kind of right down the middle so we're gonna go from the very tippy top all the way down to that little kind of triangle piece as if again it's like uh, nailed into the ground kind of pinned to the ground it's not going anywhere yeah, you can see it's a little thicker for the for the zipper so you can make it a little bit of a thicker line the other ones I would say are just a touch thinner um, the other lines include uh, this kind of bottom one at the curve, so it kind of separates that little flap from the rest of the tent. So I start at one end, kind of curve down, come back up for the other end. Uh, I do a little bit of a crisscross at the top, again, just to give a little more structure to the dome element. So just starting from the right hand side at the tippy top, coming over to the left. And then starting on the left on the tippy top, coming over to the right. Very basic, just along the top there. As long as black is dry, you can cover it up. So again, <laughs> patience. If you let things dry, you can uh, fix them up and cover them up. And then I do two kind of vertical lines on the two edges here. So just starting again, like a little bit further down, maybe kind of where this line crosses over. It's coming down, then ending off. There we go. And then this one coming down, ending off at the bottom. Okay. So yeah, tent's a little messier because I was doing wet on wet on wet, but it's there. That's the basics. You can, of course, take your time, make it a lot more brighter. Um, a lot brighter, not more brighter. Um, yeah, a lot cleaner by letting things dry. You can see if you're trying to go through paint that's very wet, you're kind of creating trails and ridges in the paint. It can kind of mess with the black color. It turns it a little muckier, so... Just as a heads up, but at least you know how to do it. Just wanted to keep it as timely as possible. We're already 10 minutes over, 11 minutes over, so at least we got that done. Cool. Um, yeah, and that's actually the last step. So uh, yes, sign the painting. That is reminder number one. 
I'll pose for a thumbnail after. <laughs> I'll do uh, my little uh, spiel first. Thank you, Gray, for the reminder. I'll do green. Where's my green at? Do I have any more green? That's like a blue green. That's fine. Come over here, light green. There! All right, all signed up. I'm good to go. Sign your paintings to finish them off. The final little step. You can't touch it anymore after you sign it. Uh, and that's the final step. So let me... Oops. Let me navigate back to the Facebook page so I can open that up for posting. And then I'll tell you about the rest of the places to post photos as well. Settings. Remove that. Update. Cool. All right, so yeah, thanks for joining me, everybody, to paint. For those who painted along, thanks. Uh, if you're looking to post any photos of your final paintings, I just put some information in the Twitch chat there. Uh, most people use the Facebook event page to post photos because it has kind of the display painting and everyone has rsvp to it, so it's a good place to kind of congregate all the photos. Uh, so yeah, Facebook is recommended. Discord's a great spot too. We have our own Discord community and lots of like art sharing channels. We have a painting sharing channel, for example, so you can always post there as well. Thanks, Lori. Yeah, thanks, Pizza. Yeah, of course, of course, you're welcome. Uh, yeah, lots of places to post Instagram, wherever your favorite social media is. You can just tag me or hashtag Aaron Paints, and I will eventually see it and all the others will too. So post wherever you want. Um, in terms of the next tutorial, I don't have another design created yet, and I won't be doing one next Friday. Usually I try my best to do tutorials every Friday night here on Twitch, but uh, next Friday I have a private tutorial because I offer private step-by-step -step tutorials as well for groups over Zoom or any other uh, video conferencing platform. So I have one of those scheduled, which is great. Uh, so I won't be online next Friday, and I'll keep everybody updated on all the social medias when my next tutorial will be. Uh, so you can just watch for that. Otherwise, I have lots of tutorials on YouTube. If you're watching on YouTube, you're already there. You can just click my channel and look at all the other um, tutorials that you'd like uh, for those on Twitch. Yeah, if you haven't checked out YouTube, I would check that out. There's lots of different tutorials to check out on my channel, all step by step, just the same as you saw. Um, for those who uh, want to support me further, for those who've been enjoying my step-by-step -step tutorials for free, um, you're welcome to do so, um, but of course no pressure. Um, if you do exclamation tips, I'll just do it in the chat right now. Oh, thanks, Gray. Gray's got it. <laughs> uh, there's lots of little links there. Uh, I've got a PayPal, I've got a Stream Elements Dono link, and uh, for those in Canada, free Interact e-transfers. I have an email set up for automatic transfers, so thank you. Yeah, for those who continue to do that, thank you. Um, but honestly, I always say just being here really supports me. Uh, for those who don't know, just watching me live on Twitch really supports me because it kind of helps me grow my audience. It helps other people find me a lot easier if other people are watching. So truly just being here live for the tutorial on Twitch is great. Uh, and again, those on YouTube watching me right now, I encourage you to check me out on Twitch. Um, I stream more than just the tutorials. I stream lots of art related content. I can chat and answer questions and talk all about painting and art. So uh, yeah, check me out any other day of the week. Um, I'm online about four to five times a week, maybe three to four, more like three to four these days. Anyway, you can check that out. Uh, cool. And uh, yeah, if you ought to go, I understand. I hope to see you at the next tutorial. Thanks for hanging out. Otherwise, I will be here to answer some questions uh, for, yeah, a little bit further in the evening. So thanks again. Bye.